Hey everyone, David Aragon and Ashley Mayu here. It is opening weekend at Santa Anita and a nice stakes race on Saturday as race nine. It is the grade two Eddie D stakes going six and a half furlongs down the hill on the turf course. And we've got an intriguing field of 11 runners signed on here. And Ashley, it's a fun race to handicap because it feels fairly wide open. And a theme of this race is a lot of horses trying to get back on track or returning from layoffs, trying to get back to their glory days. But you can't find too many horses in this race that are coming out of strong efforts yeah certainly not and if they are uh, they're taking a step up in class assuming that everyone else can improve off of their efforts but i do think uh, in the case of horses such as bran and laneway david that these are horses that might have used their most recent starts as a prep and probably needed those races so it wouldn't be shocking to see them as well as a couple others really improve in this race yeah, definitely agree with that point. It feels like both of those horses were using a five furlong race at Del Mar as preps for this race. And the six and a half furlongs down the hill can be a specialist distance for a lot of these horses. And some have had prior success going this trip. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race before we get into the bulk of the handicapping. And, you know, Ashley, there aren't that many confirmed front runners in this field. So I do agree with the pace projector that as long as he breaks out of the gate cleanly, the number five noble reflection is supposed to be in front because he is just that kind of horse. He needs to be clearly on the lead to have his best chance. Yeah, absolutely. And when he hasn't been able to make the lead, even if he's been close, it still hasn't panned out for him. And just looking at some of those fractions that he's rattled off, I would agree. I think if he breaks cleanly, uh, they'll be trying to catch him in the long run. Yeah, and we'll see how it sets up for some of the closers like Belnikov, who is a turn back in this race. He does get that LP flag indicating that he is the highest time form U.S. late pace rating in the field. And closers can sometimes do well in these six and a half furlong races down the hill if the pace materializes. We'll see if it does in this race. Let's go through this field in post position order, beginning with that horse who gets the LP flag, the number one Belnikov. And I think the distance is the major question for him because since he's been in the Phil D'Amato barn, he just hasn't really sprinted or gone this short for. He's generally a horse that is, uh, has a reputation for being best going the one mile distance and turnbacks can sometimes work going six and a half furlongs down the hill. The races that take a little bit more stamina than traditional turf sprints going five or five and a half furlongs, but it's still a question mark until this horse does it. I agree. And just looking at his races, he's one that I don't know if he loves Santa Anita in general. I know this is different. As you've mentioned, we're going six and a half and that's typically not what he's been doing. I mean, go down the page. He hasn't gone anything shorter in a mile in a very long time. So uh, it's an interesting move to see. I mean, looking at Phil D'Amato and little red feather Matikit, just the summer that they had at Del Mar, uh, they're going to try something new with him. And he's only a four-year-old. He's a six-time winner in his career. But I think it's interesting just knowing that he's typically coming from off the pace. He will need a very hot pace to, you know, have a shot here in the end. Yeah, I should say my biggest knock against him was I really didn't like his last race. I think on a good trip and just really had nothing in the stretch. So maybe that's why they're trying to change things up here. The number two is Bran. And like you said, we were talking about the field overview. He's a horse that feels like he was using his most recent start in the green flash as a prep race. It was sort of an interesting ride from Juan Hernandez because he actually broke on top of that field. He was the first run out of the starting gate of those 12 runners. And it seemed like they were intent on not pushing him in the early stages. And they just kind of let him drop back to last then he made that belated run in the stretch it felt like he was just getting something out of that race and we're probably going to see better this time I would think so I mean looking at his previous races he's been spot on just about every single time and the big thing here now going six and a half I mean he's a little bit of a specialist at the six and a half distance has a really strong track record even looking you know at his races prior to that long layoff he raced well at Kentucky Downs which is a different configuration but he was going those three quarters in a huge performance to get that grade to win and what a field that I think was a pretty deep field overall resulting in a career best number for him and a year layoff for any horse is, is going to be tough and a lot had to do with the distance as well so I think we're going to see um, some of the old things that he's shown in the past for sure. The number three is Sumter, a long shot in this race. He's tried a variety of distances and recent starts, going as short as five furlongs, as far as a mile last time in the Del Mar mile. He was setting an honest pace that day, and it just kind of fell apart towards the end. He got a little bit steadied, but it was, as he was fading, he was already beaten at that point. They're putting the blinkers on here, so maybe he's a horse that they're looking to get a little more speed out of as he turns back in distance, because he has run some nice races when he's forward in routes. We'll see if he can be as effective if he gets forward in a sprint race. Yeah, and you look at those sprints, you bring up a great point. He really hasn't been involved as early as he has been in those routes. Maybe he hasn't been quick enough, and you've alluded to the equipment change, might be able to do that. 
I'm just not sure he's necessarily ready for this level. I know this level is a little inconsistent in trying to get back on track, but even looking at some of his graded stakes tries, uh, if you, you know, one was good in the grade two, four starts back. But other than that, uh, more recently, I just think the waters have been a little deep for him. I think another horse that has class questions to answer is the number four, Mas Rapido, who's a big price on the morning line. He's been soundly defeated by Conclude in recent starts. Conclude is basically the undisputed leader of that three-year-old turf division in Southern California, but I'm not sure how deep that division really is behind Conclude, so he's stepping up to face a much tougher field here, though uh, he is a horse that's run well going six and a half in the past. And he's a three-year-old. He's never faced those older horses to this point. So that's a bigger test as well. And just, you know, the class aside, I think that's a whole new ball game for him. I don't think he liked the mile last time out, but he didn't take any respect in the race at Del Mar. He's had some decent efforts on the downhill. He's, you know, had some big seconds and thirds, but he's a horse that when I watch him, you know, I think as a three-year-old at those levels, he might have some ability. But there's been performances I thought he would maybe get the job done and he hasn't been able to do so. So I don't know if this is necessarily the spot for him to put it all together. The number five is Noble Reflection, who is a pretty intriguing runner in this race just due to his early speed. And he can be a little bit of an all or nothing type. When he gets to the front and is able to set his pace, he's really tough to pass. But when things don't go well, as they didn't last time at Kentucky Downs, uh, he can just have a, his trips be a disaster. And it really all went wrong from the start last time. You could watch uh, the head on of the start. He was just looking around a little bit, turned his head, broke a step slowly, then got slammed by another rival. And he was just visibly unhappy after that racing towards the back of the pack but he had run pretty well going three back at Santa, at Santa Anita five and a half furlongs and five starts back going six and a half down the hill he went one ten and two going this distance that's as fast as you're going to see going six and a half furlongs and he did it on the front end that day so you know that the raw ability is there for this horse to win a race like this if he can get to the front and set the right pace yeah, things need to go his way, right? And that's like anything, but especially in these sprints, just if you have a horse that has this, you know, ability to be that sharp out of the gate when that's hindered in any way, um, all bets are off. And certainly, as you've mentioned, that's what happened at Kentucky Downs. I respect them, though, for taking a chance because obviously he has that natural gate speed, but maybe the track played into it as well. As I've mentioned, Kentucky Downs is just very different. We've seen some horses show up there and they can't replicate those same performances. But uh, I think if he's sharp out of the gate, he can at least stick around around for a share in here it has been a little bit though since he's gone that six and a half but I think in those races too the main thing to point out uncontested really early on and if that's going to be the same thing here maybe it gets bold once again on the front end the number six is Lane Way. Let's take a look at his race two starts back, which was actually all the way back at the beginning of the year in January. And this was a race that was going six and a half down the hill in the clockers corner where he was a decisive winner by two and a half lengths. And actually, he was laid up for a long time after this. We didn't see him until that green flash in September at Del Mar. And kind of like we talked about with Bran, feels like maybe the connections were using that race as a stepping stone to this. And he got in a nice performance, closing to be fifth, but likely a horse is going to be more at home going the six and a half for a long distance. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more with you. And I think, you know, how he won the clockers corner was visually impressive. He beats Matorius, who beats him next time out. Matorius in the green flash. And I, I just think looking at that sort of race, that to me seems like Richard Mandela's sort of move to just use it as a prep and see where they can go from there. And overall, he raced okay. He didn't race great. He didn't race horribly. I just think it was a nice building block. And uh, the six and a half really should work well for him. It's been time and time again, a pretty good distance for him in terms of his running style. I mean, he has been able to close from off of it if he hasn't been as sharp out of the gate. But I think there's a situation where Lane Way shouldn't be too far off of it. Yeah, he's definitely a horse that can be more forwardly placed than he was last time. Another horse who could have some tactical speed in here is the number seven, I'm a Gambler. And he's an intriguing turn back in this race because he was actually sprinting six furlongs and seven furlongs in Great Britain uh, going back to 2022. Uh, was actually pretty effective in some of those sprint races over there. Now, sprinting in Europe is a different beast than sprinting in the United States. But maybe the six and a half furlongs down the hill could suit this horse because just watching his last race going the mile distance in the Delmar Mile, he got there in mid-stretch and just didn't seem to have the stamina to finish that race off as some closers had better finishing kicks than he did. So he feels like one that has talent. We've seen it overseas and even here, but maybe he just needs to find the right distance. 
well, I need to find the right distance, and maybe it's taken them a little bit to get into form. When you start to look at this field, it, it's something I'm looking at now and never really noticed, but he's four years old, but he's raced 27 times. And you start to go down the page. He had some consecutive starts that were pretty close. I mean, we're talking July 9th last year, the 15th, the 23rd, and he had a big break between December and July of this year. And in terms of form cycle, third off, you would think the improvement, I agree with you. I'm curious to see him at this distance. And he's had to face du jour in those last two, we know, has been – pretty strong, especially at the summer at Del Mar. So, um, you know, his numbers, they're really not bad for the races that he's run. I think the one thing I, I don't love is he's found himself on the lead and surrendered, but maybe it just has been that mile distance. Yeah, he's a horse that actually was purchased at auction for a million dollars at the end of last year by these connections, which is a lot of money to pay for a gelding. Uh, we'll see if it finally pays off for this turn back in distance. The number eight is Unconquerable Keen. Let's take a look at his most recent start at Del Mar. Now, this was just going to five for a long distance, so he'll be stretching out to the six and a half here. But nice to see this horse get an optional claiming victory for trainer Phil D'Amato. And we know Phil D'Amato can be very dangerous in these turf stakes races in Southern California. He's just one who has some things to prove as he ste steps up to stakes company for the first time since coming to the u.s he does but at least he's got a win coming into this race that's uh, not the story for many horses in here and he seems like he's gotten better in those last couple now i'm curious to see him go back to this distance um knowing that his last two have been at five ace but the one thing i don't mind about the five ace races is he showed a versatility in those they tried something different two starts back uh, he wasn't as forward he made a late bid and then last time out, he had to grind it out a little bit more on the front end in terms of getting the win. So uh, he's intriguing. He's, he hasn't been raced much in his career. But again, another one, if you want to make a knock on him, can he handle this class? I'm not sure. But maybe maybe at least a, a look for a piece in here. The number nine is Odd Jeeves, who is another one of the three-year-olds in this field and another big price in this race. This horse has shown plenty of versatility in his career. He sprinted on turf effectively going as short as five furlongs. He's won on the dirt at May Dan in Dubai going seven furlongs. So we know he can do different things. I just think the question is, how good is he really and does he stack up against this field? His race in the ocean side was a good race. He went off at odds of 26 to one, but to me going down the page, that's the only thing that really stands out in recent times. So I agree. Uh, I'm not sure he's ready for this sort of caliber. The number 10 is Paxa Wallop, another three-year-old that has some things to prove in this race. He had showed a lot of talent as a two-year-old, an impressive winner of races like the Del Mar Juvenile and the Zuma Beach. Things didn't really go well in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile turf, but since coming back this year, they briefly tried to get him on the Derby Trail, came off a long layoff last time in the Green Flash, yet another runner that was coming off a layoff in that race. He didn't really have much punch through the stretch there, and I think we still have to see if he's taken that step forward from his two-year-old to three-year-old season. They've had those blinkers on in the last two, and I, I guess maybe they'll, you know, they're going to wear them again here, and maybe the third time's a charm. I don't know. His best race is though he wasn't wearing blinkers, and I'm not sure what the ultimate decision for putting them on him has been. But I just, again, like you said, the move from two to three, we haven't seen the same horse yet. And um, I think he's got some things to prove. He's got more of an outside draw in here. Uh, he'll be a big price, but uh, he's kind of fallen to the wayside in his last couple. Of course, on the outside is the number 11, Radical Right, and he's another big price in the morning line, but one you can make a little bit of a case for based on the race two back when he was just uh, losing by a neck to horses like Turn on the Jets and Beer Can Man, who are not entered back here, but they would be horses that you could talk about as contenders in this race. He was a big price that day, narrowly losing a 21 to 1. I think the big question with him is, can he repeat that getting back on the turf because all of his other form surrounding it is dirt racing? Yeah, and his, you know, his dirt record to find any other sorry, turf races, excuse me, to find any other turf races, you're, you're going back so far. So if you do key in on that race, I think it's a respectable race. Look at who finished in front of him. And I think you could probably make a, a draw line through the Russell Road. Um, you know, he didn't fire, Benavengo didn't fire, other horses that took a lot of respect in there, and it was on the dirt. But uh, it, it's tough to just say, you know, key in on one race and say, I think he can run big here. He's going to need to prove himself once again. But Peter Miller, he's 21 on the morning line. I think this horse, again, is probably not going to take a lot of respect here. And uh, when he's ready to roll, like he was too back, he could get a piece at a price. Well, let's throw up our picks for this Eddie D. And Ashley, where did you go in here? I went to Bran. I was really torn between Bran and Lane Way because I think it's a similar story. Using a race last time out as a prep race. I just think Bran's resume in terms of what he's faced and the caliber and how he's kind of held his own against them. Uh, if he's any any slight bit better than he was last time out, I think he's capable of the win honors in here. 
Yeah, I agree. I think your top two picks are major players in here, Bran and Lane Way. I've got a little bit of I'm a Gambler in there, but I'm going to take a shot with the number five Noble Reflection on top. I've just been really impressed by this horse's races when he gets that trip on the front end, and it feels like as long as he breaks, he might be able to get that trip in here, because I don't think there are too many others that are going to be so on tent and challenging this horse for the early lead. So the number five Noble Reflection for me and the number two Bran for Ashley in race nine at Santa Anita on Saturday, the Eddie D. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.